Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Alexander. I'm happy to welcome everyone on our monthly classes with Alexander Elder, where we, where we uh, uh, discuss like current market situation, current market opportunities, also uh, discuss uh, some interesting things during this class. And also, uh, before we start, as usual, I will make a reminder about uh, risks, uh, because we need to understand that trading and investing it involve risk and of course we now also speak a lot about this topic during our sessions to warn uh, all uh, traders and investors like uh, not to talk about opportunities but also talk about risk because it's also an uh, important part of uh, day to day job uh, for those who now participate for the first time on our uh, webinar i will say some words about uh, admirals uh, admirals is a global company so we offer uh, trading and investing for our clients all over the world so we are, we are working in different regions in different countries so every time uh, you can uh, find like a best um a way for you to uh, trade and invest with our company uh, we made a small um, questionnaire like before we start and we see people like from all over the world from africa from europe from asia so uh, yeah and we as a company can uh, provide you uh, this opportunity to trade and invest in uh, financial uh, markets as a platform we use uh, normally like metatrader or metatrader 4 metatrader 5 and also we have a native mobile app where you can trade and invest uh, also i want to share some good news uh, recently we released a new update in our product so um, starting from march we provide a service of uh, fractional shares so right now we you can buy uh, uh, some expensive stocks partially so for example amazon or google or tesla so you can start to build your portfolio with at least like one euro or one dollar and this function also um, uh, uh, can possible to, uh, to have on MetaTrader 5 on invest accounts and also into our mobile app. And uh, also we have a service of copy trading. So we have a, a service for copy trading uh, for traders and uh, we are planning to release also a copy trading service for uh, investors. So if you are interested in this type of, um, let's say, investing, so you can go to our uh, your traders room and check uh, also this offer. Uh, but uh, also uh, what is important, uh, what is important like on the day-to-day -day activities is that we pay a lot of attention to education so that's why we are really happy that um, Alexander participated in our events on a monthly basis uh, and also I want to say that uh, to uh, um, to be informed about all our webinars about all our events and uh, if you uh, missed some of them so you can subscribe to our YouTube channel I will share a link right now and uh, also after after that uh, webinar uh, we will have a contest which will um, take part on our YouTube channel. So under that video, uh, so those who are watching us on YouTube, don't forget to put a like. And uh, if you are not subscribed to our uh, YouTube channel, you can do this uh, just not to miss our contest. Uh, um, and about rules, I will talk a little bit later. Uh, and also another uh, channel of communication which we want to encourage you to subscribe. It's our uh, Telegram channel. So there we provide uh, market updates, uh, information about our instruments some information about our webinar so also uh, not to miss some important uh, webinar uh, as webinar with alexander uh, so also please subscribe to our uh, telegram channel and there we also inform you about upcoming sessions uh, yeah and for today's agenda uh, so we will go through as usual for some uh, main markets uh, for s p 500 for dax for euro usd uh, maybe also for bitcoin so we uh, you, usually do it like from month to month. Uh, I also want to uh, ask and to hear Alexander's opinion about uh, current market situation, like what's happening in the market and what we can expect and how uh, and what uh, to prepare like for, for let's say. Uh, also uh, tomorrow gonna be Fed meeting. So some maybe some thoughts about the expectation, like what uh, Fed can tell us and if it will be some uh, rate increase and how it's also influenced to the market. Uh, also, uh, what, what, I, what I sent to Alexander before our uh, class is uh, a suggestion to talk about maybe now we see uh, the bearish trend like on uh, in general on uh, uh, stock market and we see that some um, stocks fell significantly. So maybe it's also an opportunity and to uh, chance to think about uh, forming uh, 
retirement plan, let's say investment for a portfolio for retirement plan. So also we'll be interested to hear some uh, some thoughts. Uh, and yeah, for sure, we will go through some uh, stocks. We will go through for some suggestions which we, which we got for our contest. And uh, in the end of the uh, webinar, I will tell you how to uh, uh, install Alexander's indicators to your MT5 platform. And of course, I will say uh, uh, rules about our contest where it's possible to uh, to win Alexander's book with Alexander's signature. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, it should be interesting webinar as usual. And uh, that's it uh, from my side. And now I, I want to pass the microphone to Alexander. So each month I'm waiting um, uh, this webinar and also our uh, audience, our clients waiting it. And I got like a lot of message like before this. Uh, so every time it's pleasure to get uh, expertise from Alexander, like to get new insights. Uh, so Alexander, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Roma, for this kind introduction. And uh, I, uh, uh, I have to begin by what, uh, uh, by how mistaken I was a month ago. We had this, uh, we had this webinar a month ago, and questions were what I expect of the politics, and I said, as I, uh, I said, I, I, I did not expect an invasion. I thought that uh, the uh, uh, Russian uh, uh, government was going to, you know, basically try to scare Ukraine, but uh, from, from across the border, I was totally shocked when they invaded. Uh, I know this is not a political event. Uh, uh, my political views are my own. Uh, but uh, I'll just mention that when I was uh, when I was a very young man, I thought I was older than you everything. I was a teenager. I was in my early twenties. Uh, I uh, I became very anti-Soviet and uh, did a few things, and then I escaped from the Soviet Union, ran, uh, jumped from the ship. Uh, and there is a book put out by the uh, Hoover Institution for the Study of War, Revolution, and Peace in California uh, called the KGB Wanted List. And I'm in that book twice. So you can imagine how I think about the current situation where the former sub-colonel of the KGB is uh, ah, in any case. But um, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, we'll come back to that when we discuss the current markets. Because one thing that the market markets hate most of all is uncertainty. Uh, markets can handle inflation, deflation, uh, uh, anything, uh, but, uh, but it's the uncertainty that the markets hate. And um, so in the beginning of the war, of course, there was a tremendous amount of uncertainty. Now things are becoming a little, a little brighter. So we'll see. Uh, but uh, enough about politics. Uh, I want to look at the charts because uh, my point, uh, sort of the key, the key uh, foundation uh, of uh, technical analysis is that uh, charts reflect everything. Charts reflect everything. And um, even here now, looking, uh, looking at this chart uh, of the S&P, the weekly chart on the left, the daily chart on the right, you can see uh, that uh, the impulse system is uh, red on the weekly chart. There is a strip going running across the, the, the page. Uh, so uh, uh, that, of course, does not allow me to take a long-term long position. This is, this is the impulse system. It's not a trading system, it's a censorship system. So it says no, lo no long-term long positions are uh, allowed. You're allowed to sell short, you're allowed to stand aside. But then I turn, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I turn to the right chart, the daily chart of the S&P, uh, and I see that uh, this market is banging down on the lows. And meanwhile, this banging is becoming weaker and weaker. You can see how the market collapsed back in January. It was right in the middle of the page. Uh, it had a nice rally, and then uh, uh, it, uh, it stabbed down again, the second big stab was actually the invasion. Uh, and, uh, and, and then, it, uh, well, the plan for the invasion was blitzkrieg. Uh, it was going, Kiev was going to be taken in two or three days. And uh, people, 
people were going to come out to greet uh, soldiers with flowers. Well, uh, instead they greeted them with javelins and, uh, and stingers. And, uh, and so that was, uh, uh, so initial rally was because of, okay, so it happened and now everything is clear and the rally could begin. Uh, but then the war really became heavy. And so the market went down last week and it stabbed down again yesterday and today. But notice that as the market is stabbing down, take a look at the MACD histogram immediately below. And you can see that each stab is weaker than the previous one. Uh, go to the bottom pane, uh, and that's where you see force index, which I think I, I developed this indicator, and I think it's the best indicator uh, for uh, the best tool for using uh, volume in decision making. Look at the depth of force index in January uh, in the middle of this chart. Uh, and now that was force, that was panic, that was collapse. And now, uh, every time the market steps down, it's more shallow. And the way it stepped down yesterday, just almost near the right edge, you can see there was hardly any, uh, any power uh, in that move, uh, this tiny little bottom. So uh, I see this as the market bottoming out uh, and uh, getting ready for a nice reaction. And uh, I've been posting it uh, in, uh, uh, I've been posting about it online. Uh, and of course, in my own trading, uh, <laughs> I have one short position today and I have five long positions. So I always run my account like a hedge fund. I always like to have some longs and some shorts, but I always uh, balance it depending on my market outlook. So when I'm bullish, I'm looking for more longs. When I'm bearish, I'm looking for more shorts. And I'm a short-term trader. I mean, my, my, my horizon is pretty much a week plus minus maybe a little shorter, a little longer. But uh, count me as a bull here. So today the, the US is having a very good rally. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bullish rally. However, however, uh, we are still in a bear market, right? Let's not forget that. The bear market that began in December of last year, we're in a bear market. So what we're seeing at the right edge is a bear market rally. Bear market rallies tend to be much sharper and, and shorter than bull markets. You can see if you look like even on the weekly chart on the left, when the bull trend is going up, slow and steady, slow and steady. Every once in a while it drops, uh, comes down into the value zone from the left to the right. You, you can, uh, uh, if you take the arrow to the left edge of the left chart, right? Okay, here. Brief pause, and then the rally begins again. Stabs into the value, right here, stabs into the value zone, rallies again, stabs, and then rallies again for several months. This is how bull markets behave. Bear market rallies are much more violent, but short, they don't last so long. And uh, if you look at the right side chart, the daily chart of the S&P, you can see uh, in January, the market stabbed down very heavy, and there was a uh, very good rally for about uh, two weeks, less than two weeks, and it was over. Uh, well, more than two weeks, yeah. Two weeks and it stayed flat. Uh, then uh, uh, there was another uh, low in, uh, at the end of February on the invasion, uh, and the rally lasted a week. Now, <coughs> notice where all these rallies end. They all come a little bit above the value zone, uh, and for those who are joining, for, for new people who haven't heard me speak before, who haven't read my book, uh, I call the space between slow and fast moving averages, the value zone. That's the true value of the market today. That's the value zone. Uh, a fast moving average is a short term value uh, consensus. Slow moving average is a long term value consensus. And between the fast and the slow is the value zone. So usually these rallies go a little bit above the value zone. So I'm, I'm long, but I certainly have my finger on the trigger, ready to run once it goes above the value zone. Let's take, so uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rally in a bear market, uh, my opinion. Uh, what else would you like to look at, Roman? Uh, well, till we are, we are on S&P 500, maybe uh, some words about uh, tomorrow's Fed meeting. So maybe you... You know, uh, thank you very much. But, uh, you know, Fed meeting, uh, uh, <laughs> that, 
I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, nobody knows. Uh, uh, it's. Uh, uh, I wish. Uh, uh, I wish uh, Mr. Powell's secretary was my girlfriend or something like that. I would be getting all the all the secret reports that she types. Bad joke. Uh, but uh, 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 we are having an inflation problem in the United States. Uh, and uh, the Fed is absolutely determined to bring that uh, inflation under control. Uh, inflation is the highest it's been in uh, in several uh, several decades. Uh, so uh, um, uh, they will be raising rates this year. There's no question about that. They will be raising rates this year, and they promised long time ago that they will start raising interest rates in March. And so, of course, everybody now says, oh, wait a second, there is a war going on. Uh, we have supply chain disruptions. Uh, they're they're going to raise interest rates. So the only question is, are they going to raise them uh, tomorrow a quarter of a percent or a half a percent? Half a percent is what was expected before the war. Uh, if they uh, raise it by, by half a percent, it, it'll be a lot, but it, it's expected. You know, there's no surprise about that. If they raise it by only a quarter of a percent, that will be perceived as a very soft uh, measure, and the market will jump, I think, will be more bullish. So, uh, but uh, uh, as, far as, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, if you have a technically well-selected position, uh, if you have your stop in place, um, just you know, don't go uh, you know, don't go crazy before the earn before the uh, uh, before the meeting results are announced. It will be at two o'clock uh, Eastern time uh, tomorrow. Uh, you know, don't start day trading in advance of it. Trying to be so smart, you will outguess. Is the market going to be up or down? Might as well buy a lottery ticket. Okay? That's uh, uh, just stay out, stay out. It's going to be, it, it can be very stormy. Uh, if you have good stock positions, make sure your stops are in place. Uh, and uh, sit. Uh, a lot you. of, yeah. Uh, uh, somebody said, uh, sorry, I'm just for a second. Somebody said lots of world problems would have been solved if people have had the ability to sit quietly alone in the room. So advice, please go ahead. <laughs> yep, uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, these things because it's also, I think, important for our uh, audience to pay attention for. And uh, the next instruments, let's look at DEX 40. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, Years ago, several, uh, maybe six, seven, eight years ago, uh, I was teaching a class uh, in Poland. Uh, and I was saying to my Polish friends that uh, you have a wonderful country. It has only one problem. You, you picked a bad location. Anytime Germany and Russia start figuring out their differences, they have to come through you. So ha, 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 ha. So uh, now, uh, now Germany finds itself, which is a wonderful, peaceful nation today. Uh, Germany finds itself in this, uh, uh, in this position. There is a war going on in Ukraine and German stock market and also the French stock market have really fallen very, very badly. Um, but, 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 is it the time to panic? I don't think so. Look at the weekly chart on the left uh, and, uh, uh, you can see, uh, you know, Roman, something is off with, with, with the impulse settings because a MACD histogram already ticked up, right? You see it, right? Mm -hmm. So the, mo the moving average is down, a MACD ticked up. So the impulse should be blue and not red. Uh, check, maybe check your settings. This probably has to do with, uh, with parameter settings on the thing, but the impulse should be blue. So basically the weekly, uh, the weekly impulse is blue. Uh, you're allowed uh, allowed to buy. Uh, we look at the daily chart uh, on the right. Uh, it already entered the value zone, of course, but 
but basically the message is not to panic. Uh, it, it's a little late to buy because I, uh, uh, I don't like shopping in the value zone. I want to buy uh, undervalued goods and sell overvalued goods. Uh, and right now on this chart, the German market is fairly valued in the daily chart. So when I look at something like this, I say, I have no advantage. If somebody held a gun to my head and said, trade Germany, I would buy it today. Uh, but without a gun, I would say, well, let, let me wait. Maybe there will be some kind of uh, another step down uh, and, and that will be, a, but, but clearly Germany is setting up for a buying opportunity. Not today. Thank you. Uh, as the next instruments, let's look at Euro USD. Uh -huh. Well, uh, uh, I uh, uh, another mistake that I made. Uh, uh, I thought uh, in October, if you look at the left side weekly chart. When the when euro uh, when the uh, euro was uh, at the lower channel line, I thought market was bottoming there, and I was uh, in any case, uh, uh, and uh, and and I, uh, I haven't traded currencies in a while. I am so busy with American stocks, and there's so many wonderful opportunities. It just uh, you know there is only so much information I can process, so so much capital I can commit. Uh, but um, I will be actually flying to Europe uh, in a few days, uh, and uh, I was going to prepay my uh, hotel reservation just you know with cheap euros, and so I missed the rally. And then, of course, after the rally ended, uh, the thing collapsed uh, because of the war. So my not prepaying worked out to my advantage, unfortunately for uh, for the euro. But 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 here is interesting stuff. Look at the weekly MACD histogram. Look at the depth of this MACD histogram back in October, right? That was the power of bears. Then there was a rally, and I call this rally breaking the back of the bear. And now at the right edge, bear is coming back again. If, if, if MACD histogram turns up, which is a very high chance of doing, from the level which is higher than the level of the October bottom, uh, we will have a beautiful bullish divergence. Not only that, we will have a beautiful bullish divergence of MACD lines below the histogram. Uh, so I think the euro is coming into uh, a very attractive buy zone here. Not yet, but it's getting there. It is getting there. Watch MACD histogram on the weekly. Looking at the daily chart, looking at the daily chart, I don't really like how deep this MACD histogram was in the last few days. It's just too much, too panicky. So these kinds of bottoms, I like to see retested. Uh, uh, so maybe maybe another halfway down from where it is now to the low uh, on the on, on the chart. Uh, but, but I think Yuri is finding a base here. Hasn't found it yet, but getting there. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's look at gold. Well, uh, gold, uh, uh, gold responds to two main factors, inflation and fear, fear and inflation. And uh, what gold is saying here, just screaming from this chart, the, the war is coming to an end. So uh, gold was uh, at uh, uh, almost uh, $2,100 an ounce uh, just a few days ago, and now it's 1935. Right? So, so uh, I think this, uh, this tells us that, uh, that the war is uh, going to be resolved sooner than later. I would love to see Russian troops go back to Russia uh, to uh, empty shelves, to non-flying airplanes, uh, and to the great commander in chief uh, who sent them, sent them out uh, for a quick victory. That, that, that'll be something, that'll be something. 
And uh, yeah, let's look at uh, crude oil. Oil, yes. I traded it. <laughs> I traded the spike. Uh, uh, I lost a little, uh, two trades. Uh, uh, I actually was trading uh, uh, USO. It, it's US oil and gas ETF. Uh, and they chickened out. I ran and lost a little money. Uh, but they also had a short in Oxy, uh, Accidental Petroleum, and that worked out beautifully. So uh, on balance, it wasn't a lot, but, but on balance, it came out okay. Uh, it, 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 this was a crazy emotional market. And the best thing a beginning trader can do when market behaves like that, stay away from it, stay aside. This is, a, uh, this is you know, it's like going surfing. You can go surfing on a nice sunny day, or you can go surfing uh, in a in a storm, uh, in a hurricane. This is surfing in a hurricane, not for beginners. Um, so uh, again, this thing this thing suggests that uh, uh, that uh, oil had a crazy spike, and uh, such spikes don't uh, they're not usually retested. But what you have on the what we see on the weekly chart, I call this thing a kangaroo tail. This long tail sticking out of the tight wheel of prices. Trade against the tail. By the way, we're having a tail like that today on the volatility index in the US. Uh, but uh, uh, I wanted to sell it short and no shares are available. First time it happened to me in many years. No shares available. Cannot sell short kangaroo tails. In any case, yeah, uh, looks, like, looks like things are going to settle down a bit. Uh, and uh, to uh, finish our, let's say, market overview, so we can, uh, if you don't mind, we can look at Bitcoin. Yeah, the king's new clothes. Uh, let's see. I, I just saw it in, uh, yeah, right here. So uh, uh, there was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, short signal shorting signal on the weekly chart on the left. Uh, you can see how uh, in 2011, uh, the market uh, was, was running like crazy uh, along the upper channel line. Uh, look at the height of MACD histogram, the height of MACD lines, and the height of force index, everything got reacted. Then there was a nasty drop uh, from 60,000 plus to 30,000. You know, they say Bitcoin is the new money. Money has two functions. It's a medium of exchange and a store of value. Medium of exchange, I have dollars. I can go to the store, uh, give them uh, some dollars and buy a box of chocolate. Uh, I'm going to Europe. Uh, uh, I, have, I have some euros with me. Uh, I can go... Uh, I can go up to a bar in the airport, uh, give them a few euros uh, and uh, get a beer. Right? So exchange of value, uh, money is value. It's also a storage of value. It's also a storage of value. So uh, uh, if, I, uh, uh, if I have a bank account and I have uh, $10,000 in it, I say, okay, I have $10,000, nice. I have them today, I'll have them tomorrow, maybe with a little interest. What kind of store of value is something that can go from 60,000 to 30,000 in, in a week or in a month? It's, uh, it's uh, yeah, so don't, don't think of Bitcoin as money. It's a purely speculative uh, thing. Uh, so in any case, so, so it drops to 30,000 and then it goes to a new higher high, uh, back to the weekly chart, new high, higher than uh, uh, at the end of 2011. And this is one of my favorite patterns in trading, a false breakout. Uh, uh, Bitcoin bre breaks out to a new record high. And of course, that's where all the outsiders and beginners say, we have a new high, buy, buy, buy. When a professional looks at a new high, my first question is, do I have do I have a shorting opportunity? Well, I, I, I'm not I'm not trading Bitcoin, but, but with any other market, with crude oil, with gold, do I have a shorting opportunity? And then you look down at the indicator, you look at the mass 
of on ACD histogram at the first peak and how much skin period is on the second. Severe bearish divergence of MACD lines and a severe bearish divergence of force index. And uh, down, down, down. So it was, uh, uh, it was uh, over 60,000 Bitcoin. Now it's uh, slightly below 40,000. So uh, looking at the daily chart, looking at the daily chart of Bitcoin, uh, I don't see a good trading. Uh, look, a good trading opportunity to me is a false breakout and or kangaroo tail. When prices break out of the envelope, uh, which, uh, uh, which uh, Bitcoin did in the beginning of hostilities, uh, if you're quick enough, catch it. Uh, when it goes up and touches the upper channel line, which you did about 10 days later, uh, very upper channel line, sell it right away, go short if you can. That basically, this channel that you have, and this, and, and, and this indicator, this tool is available from admirals, so you don't have you know, nothing secret here. Uh, uh, this, this, <coughs> this channel, this envelope shows what's normal and what's crazy. And as a trader, you want to trade against the crazy. At the right edge of the screen of the daily chart, Bitcoin is normal, you know, as normal as this crazy instrument can be. It's normal, it's trading around value. And a look at it, it's fairly valued. It's not too cheap, it's not too expensive. And I have no edge, I have no advantage if I trade it. Uh, I, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be basically saying, well, maybe this, maybe that. When it hits the upper channel line or the lower channel line, that's when situations are crazy and you can bet against them. Say, ah, everybody thinks it's going up. It's only about as high as it ever gets. Let me sell it short. But at the right edge, perfectly normal. No opportunity. Uh, thank you, Alexander. Uh, I think we covered like uh all instruments which we usually do like during our this beginning of the webinar uh, and uh, also we can uh, uh, discuss let's say those trades at least it was one uh, which our um, uh, audience suggested for today i just want to make a quick reminder that we will have a recording and we will have a contest on the youtube channel i shared the link uh, a few posts ago so if you're not subscribed you can go there and also you can leave question for next webinar and also participate in contest uh, and rules of it i will tell in the end of the webinar but uh, i will open just in a second this trade which was suggested uh, it's uh, VTTR uh, stock. Uh, it was suggested today, so it's not executed, but to think out loud, to speak out loud uh, about this, uh, let's say, trade, it will be interesting to hear uh, your opinion, like how it was done, especially if we're talking about like, uh, so here I put on chart uh, enterprise, so it's uh, like yesterday, and here we see uh, stop loss and also take profit. So, so far, uh, as I checked before the webinar, it's not executed, right? I mean, like by stop loss or take profit. You know, uh, there is, a, I think I mentioned, I, I may have mentioned in one of the previous webinars, uh, uh, there's a, a wonderful, uh, very successful, uh, very famous retired money manager uh, uh, in, uh, 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 in Boston, uh, uh, oh, his name is just escapes me. He uh, uh, he wrote the book, uh, well worth reading, called "One Up on the Market." One up on the market, meaning alone against the market. Right? One up on the market. Michael, Michael, uh, whatever. Uh, and he writes in that book, uh, trying uh, <clears throat> trying to catch a button which is what this trade is trying to do. This trade is trying to catch a button, right? The, the, the stock is falling and the person is buying a rapidly falling stock. Uh, uh, this guy wrote, trying to catch a button. It's like trying to catch a falling knife. You invariably grab it in the wrong spot. You're gonna get your hands cut when you're trying to catch a falling knife. This, this is a trade that I would never take. Uh, uh, to me, it's just uh, uh, philosophically and practically wrong. 
uh, don't catch a falling knife. Uh, you want to get a knife? Wait until it hits the floor and vibrates and stops vibrating. That's when you pick it up. Now you have a knife. Uh, but, uh, but to say uh, there is a collapsing stock, I'm going to put a buy order underneath this collapse. Uh, that's, a, that's a very, very dangerous business, extremely dangerous. It's, it's, uh, it's also a very stressful way to, uh, to, to live, to be a trader. When you buy something uh, near the bottom, like we reviewed the euro, for example, or we reviewed the, the German market, uh, you can plan, you can wait, you can wait for signals to take apart. Something like this is just a flying knife. Ooh. So, sorry, uh, <laughs> I wish I could tell you this is the best trade ever and I'm gonna take it myself as soon as this webinar is over. Uh, I, sometimes happens and I always tell you when it happens, but, uh, but this is a dangerous way to trade. Okay. Thank you, Alexander. So yeah, uh, trade was executed. I see a people who, a uh, person who suggested this trade on our chat. So it was executed, but it's not closed. I mean, normally we collect like the winner is those uh, whose trade closed by take profit or like in plus uh, for a yeah. time uh, for a time yeah. of webinar. And uh, I want to encourage everyone to participate in this contest. So under this video, uh, I will explain the rules in the end. But you can subscribe to our YouTube channel uh yeah so also uh what, what what alexander i wrote to you uh before so if it's uh possible to say some uh words or let's say to speak uh out loud uh to 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 think uh if it's uh like a good time uh to uh buy some stocks for example for long-term investments uh so maybe mm. we can, we can uh, speak like about this topic and then go to instruments if you don't mind Roman, it's a good idea but I think it's a little early. Uh, but it's certainly a very good idea because uh, you want to, uh, uh, it's a good idea to plan in advance what it is, what it is that you're going to buy. Uh, let me, uh, uh, I find now, as far as retirement fund, I find myself trading just as actively in it as I trade in my regular fund. Uh, because I know how to trade short term, and so I, I, I do it in both accounts. Uh, but if somebody if somebody is more conservative and wants to buy something for the long haul, uh, I have a couple of stocks uh, that uh, that I am paying uh, a lot of attention to, uh, looking to buy them for the long haul. Uh, when we get a major major buy signal in the in the U.S. Uh, uh, I have this signal which I described in my books. It's called I call it a spike spike signal. Uh, it's given by the indicator called the new high new low index. And um, uh, every time every time you look at the Wall Street Journal or you look at any kind of good database, they give you uh, uh, or, or a newspaper, uh, they give you a list of stocks that made a new high today for the year. Uh, or stocks that made a new low for the year today. Uh, a very good source, uh, I, I mean, it's all over the internet, it's everywhere. Uh, I go to the site called barchart.com. Uh, and uh, uh, on, a, on a bad day, you may, have, you may have a situation where there's a thousand stocks making a new low and maybe 100 making a new high. So the new high and new low index on that day is minus 900. And that's for a day. I add up, I, I keep track of, uh, of this number now for over 20 years. And I always add up these numbers for the last five days. Uh, so uh, if the weekly, so I call it the weekly new high and new low index, it's the daily time uh, multiplied for the last five days. When it reaches minus 4,000, the market is in a panic. The big, huge market is in a panic. And so uh, when, the, when the weekly new high new low reaches minus 4,000, and then it rises above minus 4,000, that to me is a major buy signal, which occurs maybe two or three times in a decade. Two or three times in a decade, not, not a common thing. So for that, but, but, but it'll come. 
it'll come. We're in a bear market. We, we are going to get a spike signal at some point. Uh, I have a couple of stocks uh, that I am, uh, they're kind of on my mental list to, uh, to buy them and to, to put them for the long term. Uh, so uh, <laughs> the question just popped up, can you really live from trading? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, <laughs> very few people can do it. It's a very dangerous business. It requires more discipline than most people have. And you know, uh, I just saw a beautiful quote from Warren Buffett. He says, temperament uh, is more important than intellect uh, for success in investing. You have to have patience. You have to have uh, commitment. Uh, you cannot be lazy, ta, 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 ta. but yes, it's doable. Very difficult, but doable. In any case, so a couple of stocks. Uh, let me, uh, Roman, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll mention the stocks and then you will put up the charts. And if you don't have it, we'll switch to my computer and I'll show uh, you. You can, you, you can show on your ones. Okay, so uh, I will do, let me see one second. Then. Uh, here. Uh, and uh, share screen and uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Okay, here. Okay, you see my screen now, yes? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. so uh, uh, remember I mentioned this indicator to you. Uh, the new high, new low index. Uh, let me just show you uh, how it looks. Uh, one second. For some reason it's very, uh, maybe because I'm sharing the screen, it's very slow to come up one more time. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. Oh, I think, okay, maybe now, one more time. I think it's because of sharing that it's so slow. Uh, okay, oh, it came, okay. The new high, new low index. Uh, when it comes up, you will see the weekly chart on the left, long-term weekly chart, the fast daily chart uh, on the right. And uh, what I want to do here is expand uh, the weekly chart. Yeah, I think it's, it's just so slow. Okay, it, 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 it happened. Um, so uh, what you see here, uh, this is the new high, new low index. Uh, as of yesterday, it was minus 1,600. But you can see how in, uh, in March of 2020, it fell below minus 4,000. And when it came above minus 4,000, that was the uh, buy signal, major buy signal. Before that, it happened in 2018, two years earlier. And once again, below minus 4,000, above minus 4,000. Uh, and we got a bull market. Before that, it happened uh, in uh, 2016, below minus 4,000, uh, above minus, and, and in other words, I think this is the absolutely best signal in uh, market analysis. The only problem, it happens only, it happens only uh, two or three times uh, in a decade. You can see since 2016, we had three signals. Yeah. So I uh, have to be patient. Uh, but, uh, but for the time, uh, uh, for the time when the system uh, comes again, uh, there are a couple of stocks I'm interested in. There is a technology, uh, and I'll, I'll put S&P up, up, up on the screen so we can see how the US market is doing now, the, the daily chart is coming up. And by the way, look at this. I may see the, uh, 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 look, look at this. 
uh, down in uh, January, bang. And this is how strong MACD histogram is in fourth index. You saw the same thing on Roman's chart. Bang, down on the uh, Ukraine uh, invasion. MACD histogram is much more shallow. Fourth index is more shallow. And now yesterday, <laughs> it came down uh, to a very low level. And look at the height of MACD histogram, height of fourth index. So bullish divergence is all across. So in any case, back to two stocks. Modern technology, uh, modern technology, modern, modern society runs on chips, on electronic chips. Uh, and uh, the best chips are made in Taiwan, uh, TSM, Texas uh, Semiconductor Manufacturing, and some are made in the United States. China is trying to develop, China has chips, but they're, poor, they're not as good a quality. So that's why they're coming to us and buying our chips because they cannot make them. There is one and only one company in the world that makes machines for making chips. Right? So everybody builds machines to make chips, but to build a machine that will be making chips, you need a basic machine. And there's only one company that makes them, one in the world. It's a Dutch company uh, called uh, uh, ASML, like uh, uh, a, somebody is raising their hand, but sorry, I, I really cannot pay attention. Uh, once again. Okay, here it is, ASML. So this is the weekly chart. Uh, and this is the, uh, and by the way, the Chinese tried to buy a piece of the company. Uh, a couple of years ago, the US came in and said, absolutely, it basically uh, ruined the sale. You know, the Chinese could not buy this company. You can, you can buy chips, but you cannot buy a chip making machine, uh, a machine that makes chip making machines. So, if I compress this chart, uh, so this is the company that makes essential technology and has no competitors in the world. And it's Dutch, it's very well managed. So uh, uh, it was trading at $100, $200. Uh, uh, in, in recent years, it went up to almost $900. And right now it, is a, it, it got uh, overbought. Uh, right now it is in a, in a bear market, the trend is down. Anybody wants to catch a falling knife? Uh, I don't, I don't. Uh, but uh, ASML, which was trading at $900, at $900 is now down to 587. So uh, no rush, very peaceful. Uh, I keep an eye on the new high new low index. And when the weekly new high new low index drops below minus 4,000, and there will be panic in the market, panic, panic, panic. And then the panic will, uh, break uh, because uh, uh, the new high and low index will rise above minus 4,000. I'm going to go and buy myself a nice position in ASML and put it aside for um, a year, two years, long time. So this is one stock that I think is a uh, great past, great present, and great future. Uh, the stock is now in a bear market because everything is in a bear market. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, that's one stock. Another stock that I am very uh, that I am very uh, bullish for the long term um, uh, is uh, Moderna, uh, the the vaccine maker, uh, and. Uh, 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 Moderna created the best uh, uh, vaccine uh, against this virus. And for those of you who don't, you know, I'll, I'll give you like 20, 20 minutes of science. The old way of making vaccines, they take chicken eggs and put uh, 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 reduced strength viruses into it. And so that's how they grow those vaccines inside. There's this huge uh, areas of uh, warm chicken eggs in which they're growing the vaccine. Uh, they have those in Russia, they have those in China. Well, Moderna doesn't do any chicken eggs except for breakfast uh, because uh, they manipulate uh, uh, the DNA uh, of uh, viruses and then use that for vaccines. So it's, it, it, it's not a biological method, it's a highly, highly technical uh, uh, scientific method. 
uh, direct. And so uh, it's the best vaccine. Uh, uh, Pfizer, Pfizer is second best, uh, very close second best, but uh, Pfizer has more factories. So more people hear about Pfizer, but, but Moderna is better. Uh, uh, I got vaccinated by Moderna, uh, of course, I had a choice. Uh, but uh, uh, now uh, they announced, uh, the announcements are coming out all the time. First they announced that since they have the technology, they're going to apply their technology to develop vaccines against five diseases. Uh, uh, genital herpes, which is a very common uh, uh, venereal disease, against shingles, which is a very painful uh, neurological condition, uh, and against two, two, kind, two cancers, I forget which. In any case, they're just saying, this is the next vaccine coming. Oh, HIV, HIV. And they just uh, began their first clinical trial uh, with HIV vaccine, uh, was announced yesterday, or the day before yesterday. So this is a company at the cutting edge of science with proven uh, with proven uh, success. And now they're just saying, well, we succeeded in this, we can apply our science and our technology to other diseases. What do you think is going to happen to the stock of this company? So uh, uh, here is the stock of Moderna. We'll look at the weekly chart again. Uh, again, uh, sorry about the slow movement of the screen because uh, when I'm broadcasting, I guess it slows it down tremendously. So here is Moderna. Uh, Moderna was uh, selling uh, quite cheap uh, three, four years ago. Again, it's very difficult for me to compress this chart because of broadcasting. Uh, but then it had a, you know, uh, everybody realized, uh, so, so it was, <coughs> it was $20, 30 And then it ran up to almost $500 uh, uh, last year. And uh, you know, people just went crazy and started paying crazy prices. You see a kangaroo tail up on top. Uh, you see a bearish divergence of force index in the bottom pane. And the stock went from $450 to about 100 and, 120. Uh, I have a position now, uh, uh, not a huge position. Uh, I am not sure that this is the bottom because I see, I look at how strong MACD histogram is below zero. And uh, it just, I think this bottom wants to be retested. I don't think it's ready to, to have another crazy run, uh, but I have a small position, uh, mRNA. These are the types of st stocks uh, that I can recommend uh, for the long pool, <laughs> recommend. I'm buying, <laughs> one of them I bought, another one I'm planning to buy. But, but but this is the, the, this is the type of stock uh, that uh, they're basically both stocks are based on hugely advanced technology. They have technology way ahead uh, of the pack, uh, and they have a proven multi-year record of success. Uh, and now they're going to expand their technology to other things. What's wrong with this picture? Huh? What do you think, Roman? So. Uh, Roman asked me also to take a look uh, at uh, some, some of the stocks. Uh, lots of Chinese stocks came up on the list. I don't touch Chinese stocks for a variety of reasons. Uh, and uh, uh, political, of course, first of all. But the second reason, it, it looks highly likely, highly likely the Chinese stocks will be kicked out of American markets. Uh, there, was a, uh, there was an article about it recently, and they said, the time is one minute to midnight. Uh, uh, why? Uh, because of the wonderful Chinese government. Uh, in order to be listed in America, stocks have to be audited. They have to have audits by certified auditors. And, uh, uh, and, and that's a very important part that makes American market uh, basically honest. Uh, the Chinese government uh, said uh, a couple of years ago that no, our stocks are going to be, uh, Chinese companies are going to be audited by Chinese com uh, auditors and uh, secret information is not going to be shared. So it took America a long time to wake up and they finally said, listen, if you don't play by our rules, get out of our sandbox. 
we have the rules for our sandbox. You have, everybody has to be audited the same, uh, whether your stock is from Holland or Italy or United States, and we're not gonna give you separate rules. So, uh, and of course, Chinese government is not giving in. And so it looks like this is the, this could be the end of Chinese companies listing in the US. Uh, you know, you have a genius in charge of China uh, who is busy destroying the technological sector. And this is just his latest uh, little thing. So I, uh, you know, if, if you if you're buying Chinese stocks here, you need a lot of luck. And even if you're selling them short, because if they stop trading, they will freeze your money and, you know, ah, please, China stocks, great idea. Uh, let's take a look at some other stocks on your list, Roman, uh, that's uh, not China related. Uh, what is it? PayPal. Uh, for some reason, you sent me a lot of rapidly falling stocks. PayPal. Uh, again, I'm sorry. It takes a long time. Uh, Trying to catch a bottom is like trying to catch a falling knife. You invariably grab it in the wrong spot. This is a falling knife from $300 down to below 100. The stock lost two thirds of its value. And there is no good sign of a bottom yet, none. Look, uh, back in November, it hit the minus three HR channel. And now in February, it's outside of the three HR channel. So the stock is cheaper and bears are stronger. This is exactly the type of stock you don't want to touch. What causes it? I don't know. Probably FinTech. FinTech is, uh, PayPal is expensive. Uh, uh, if I need to send somebody money in a different currency, I mean, I know PayPal takes such a big cut. And there is a company in London, actually an Estonian company called WISE, W-I-S-E. So much cheaper. So FinTech is basically killing PayPal. Uh, anybody wants to touch a falling knife? Uh, another company uh, that uh, you know well that uh, Roman put on the list, Pfizer, uh, PFE. I remember a long time ago when uh, Pfizer came out with Viagra. Now that was a huge stock. Everybody was nobody could get the, nobody could get the product, but everybody was buying the stock. Uh, went up like crazy. Now, of course, it's uh, it's a generic. But let's see. Uh, let's see what it looks like. Oh, uh, once again, PFE weekly chart coming up. Uh, The stock, the stock is, uh, is in its own private bull market. Uh, the big stock market goes up, goes down, and the stock just has very good pattern on the weekly chart. Below value, overvalue. Below value, overvalue. Below value, overvalue. Below value, overvalue. It was below value two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and now it's on the way to being overvalued. But in any case, if you're looking to buy something for, for a short-term trade, a few weeks maybe, a uh, couple of weeks, why not this? This is, you know, stock is in a steady, progressing bull market. Perfect pattern, higher highs and higher, and higher lows. The weekly impulse system is green, we're legal to buy. We go to the daily chart of Pfizer. Uh, well, it, 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 it outran itself a little bit. Uh, it's now approaching the, the upper channel line. But when it comes down to the value zone on the daily chart, which is about $49, it's now at 52. It will become an attractive possibility. Uh, XOM. I've been, I've been looking to sell XOM short for a month. And I never did. And of course, <laughs> Uh, uh, now would have been a great time to be short XOM. Uh, XOM is ExxonMobil, the biggest oil company in the United States. Uh, and uh, the weekly chart is coming up.
So, uh, yeah, we see this kangaroo tail the reversal, the stack was falling. I, uh, there was no bearish diversion, so I never got myself into shorting this thing. But, but it's certainly the idea was good. But you know, sometimes you have a good idea and the idea doesn't work out, you know, just practically doesn't work out. But of course, you only pay, you only get paid for practical ideas that do work out, uh, uh, that you work out. But uh, this one, this one, I was circling, circling, circling around, and when it finally started moving, I was not in it. Um, waiting for the daily chart to load up. Um, usually, it's so fast, but when I'm waiting for the uh, waiting for the uh, broadcasting and, 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 and this thing at the same time, it just kills me. So, uh, uh, Roman, I think, uh, let's see. Oh, here it is, finally. Uh, uh, Excel mobile. Well, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, we may be having a buying opportunity. Oil is still very popular. Uh, and you can see how price opened on a gap down today, stacked down, rejected the low, and now it's coming up uh, during the day. Uh, my eyes are on this uh, MACD histogram. As soon as it stops being read, uh, Excel mobile will become uh, a legal legal uh, trade again. So uh, uh, Roman, back to you. I think I think we're just about running out of time. We, we, uh, let's take let's take a few let's take a few uh, minutes uh, to okay. to was... summarize. Yes, Roman. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So uh, you know. Uh, I'm looking at uh, Q and A, and there, and there, are lots of questions. Let listeners maybe spend a few minutes looking at them. Uh, Bogdan is asking, uh, uh, do diversions have meaning in shorter time frames, such as a five minute? Yes, they do, but they have uh, less weight. In other words, if you catch a diversions on a weekly chart you may be looking at a major trend developing. On a daily chart, you may be looking at something that will stay uh, for a week, uh, three, four, five days. Uh, if you find the divergence on a five minute chart, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna work for 15, 20 minutes. So uh, yeah, they, 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 these things, they, the, the things I show, the values of the divergences, price extremes, the reversals, they work in every time frame, and I use them in every time frame. But you have to be very, very conscious of what your target is and what your protective stop is. How long will you stay in this trade? That decision must be taken before you enter a trade. It's not like you know you put in a trade. Well, I'll wait and see, and maybe you know 10, 15 minutes, or maybe I'll take it for tomorrow. Well, if you're so vague, you will lose money. You have to be very clear. What is your time frame? What is your target? What are you shooting at? Uh, uh, Marty is asking, what are the fast and slow moving averages that build the value zone? Well, one is fast, another is slow. You have choices for those. I described the whole process in my book. Um, and uh, by the way, the book got published in Germany two years ago. The publisher did a beautiful job. Um, uh, uh, Alessia is asking, how can we uh, tell a kangaroo tail from a falling knife? Well, uh, it starts as a falling knife and then it reverses. It reverses and goes back to where it started. And then you say, oh, a kangaroo tail. So you can start buying, uh, buying that thing. Not in the middle, but near the end of the day. Uh, so... Uh, 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 tab is asking, uh, are we at the end of the bear market? Is it a good opportunity to buy for long term? I think it's way too early, way too early. Bear markets, don't know. we had one bear market that lasted two months. 
And that was when that uh, virus uh, escaped from uh, or was released from China and uh, infected the world. And, uh, and the governments uh, of the free world responded by pumping enormous amounts of money into the economy. Uh, it's not happening again. It's not happening again. So uh, no, we're not at the end of the bear market. I don't think so. Uh, so uh, uh, Roman, somebody keeps asking why his trade was skipped, probably because you didn't get the email. I I, I already wrote yeah, like, to contact yeah, me personally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, somebody is asking, uh, uh, I think I just lost it. Uh, we, somebody asked me about the differences uh, in my trading on, on my, re, in my real account and in my pension account. Uh, you know, for, for many years, I tried to be long-term in pension account and, uh, and, and then finally realized I'm making money in my short-term trading. Why don't I do the same thing in the pension account? The only thing in pension account, my profit targets are much smaller. So I take smaller risks, and uh, and that's it. Uh, but but the but the type of trading I do is is is, is exactly the same. Just uh, you know, instead of instead of driving at uh, 100 kilometers an hour, I go maybe 40 kilometers an hour. That's all. Well, Roman, thank you very much for inviting me here. Give me a, give give me the opportunity to review the markets with you, uh, to refresh. You know, some some people ask me, uh, why do you teach? If you know if you know how to trade, why do you teach? Uh, why not just basically cover your head with a blanket and trade under the blanket and don't say anything? And I always say, preaching is good for the preacher. You know, uh, uh, in a church, right? When the guy gets up and gives a sermon, it's good for him because I know that when I teach, it reinforces my discipline. It reinforces uh, my attention to details. And occasionally, didn't happen today, but occasionally there is a beautiful idea that comes in a question. And then I trade that idea. So it's, uh, it reinforces, uh, uh, I, I enjoy teaching. I've done it all my life. Uh, uh, I had a younger sister whom I was teaching all the time, poor girl. Uh, and uh, uh, plus it reinforces my own discipline. Plus occasionally it gives me a good idea. And so thank you very much for inviting me here today. Uh, it's uh, uh, very pleasant working with you. And now that uh, yesterday I bought a ticket to Tallinn. So uh, I look forward, I look forward to seeing you there and uh, collecting the promised coffee cup. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Looking forward to see you here. Thank you, Alexander. So thank it's uh, really every month. It's uh, really uh, enjoyable to participate in these uh, classes. So thank you for that. Uh, and uh, yeah, have a good uh, rest of day and have a good week and see you in Tallinn. And uh, I will also have uh, uh, say some words like for our uh, audience about indicators and about uh, our next contest. So thank you, Alexander. And See you on uh, next class. Okay. See you in uh, April. Yes, see you in April. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Goodbye. Uh, and also, uh, dear participants, so just uh, a few minutes of your attention. So just uh, to uh, say some words about uh, current uh, webinar and I got like some questions. So first of all, about contest. So uh, I just want to make a reminder that we have a contest where uh, the main prize is a book with Alexander Elder's signature. So uh, I want to say some words how to participate in that contest, first of all and uh, uh, to explain later about indicators, how you can install uh, uh, indicators on your platform. So uh, let's start with the contest. And uh, uh, our contest is, uh, let's say, gentleman contest, uh, which runs on our YouTube channel. I will share uh, the, the link to YouTube channel one more time. So if you are not subscribed, uh, subscribe, so please do this now. And we collect your ideas on the last uh, video uh, so of today's webinar so if you're watching already on uh, uh, um, 
uh, YouTube. So under that video, uh, this video for March, so the latest one. So uh, the, the contest is here and uh, you can subscribe and tomorrow the video will be uploaded and you can participate in the contest. So to take part in the contest, you need to uh, subscribe to our Admiral's channels, which I shared right now, like the video, uh, suggest a trade for one asset, which is traded in admirals so you can check if you are already our client you can easily check in mt4 and DeFi platform or you can check on our website so it's super easy we trade it like most um, i would say a lot of instruments all over the world uh, more than eight thousand but in any case uh, you can check so uh, what you need to suggest uh, you need to suggest and uh, trade uh, like with enterprise, uh, you can use, uh, for example, Alexander Elder system for the trade. Uh, so enterprise, stop loss, take profit and date of post. Uh, the date of post is really important. So after the date, I, I will check on chart if your trade was executed, if uh, then it was stop loss or take profit executed. Uh, so uh, the trade should be... Uh, executed and in best case scenario closed by take profit um, in the period till today's webinar uh, which today is 15th of march till next webinar we're gonna have in april so uh we, you have like around the months for that trade so you can uh, suggest your trade tomorrow or in one week or in two weeks so it's up to you when you have some idea uh, for some trade so you can suggest this and uh, the winner will be those who uh, whose trade will be <clears throat> firstly executed by take profit and if we will have a several ones uh, we'll choose those one whose position will be uh, larger in uh, person uh, like uh, in the percentage of movement and uh, also <clears throat> important thing it's not allowed to edit comments so if it will be a mark that comment was edited uh, we will not uh, use like such uh, uh, suggestion for the con so it's gentleman contest uh, we believe that uh, it will reward you more like in uh, real trading but also to mm, let's say uh, to have chance to present Alexander Elder's book uh, so participate in our contest so be uh, uh, let's say active on it and uh, yeah and maybe for you it will be rewarded uh, with alexander elder's book uh for uh, actually for the person who are uh, also wrote that it uh, was a mistake so i uh, we will discuss it later uh and also uh one part about indicators so as it showed at the beginning uh we started to show uh all uh instruments on our mt5 platform on our account so it's also possible to you to have the same indicator and uh, they are available for our clients with a real account uh, with a balance of more than 200 euro. Uh, so you uh, can send a request to get these um, indicators. So right now for our webinars participants, I will send uh, email address in our chat so you can copy it and send me uh, just an email with uh, the subject like El uh, elder disk or Alexander elder indicators, it doesn't matter. Uh, so it's uh, uh, this email only for, for that purpose. So uh, just let us know that you want them and uh, we will happy to provide you uh, the indicators package, uh, chart templates and also video tutorial uh, how to uh, use them. So yeah, if you want to uh, open also account, if you're not uh, our client, so please uh, also send us a request and uh, our uh, team will contact you and explain how you can open an account and also uh, do uh, the... No, you don't need to provide uh, an account details. I see a question. So we uh, can... You can just write to us from your uh, email on what you have at Traders Room. So yeah, if you're registered on that email, it's fine. If it's not, uh, better to mention like... Uh, yeah. Uh, for uh, I see a question about only for competition. Don't get so please uh, say some words about what what do what do you mean? Uh, so competition and indicators are two uh, things which we offer like in the same uh, way. So you can use indicators but not participate in contest. And from other side you can participate in contest and don't use indicators if you don't want. So yeah, it's 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 up to you. But as we see uh, from Alexander's. Mm, a presentation his approach for many many years uh we see that it's uh, it's works and it's provide discipline so you have a package you have uh, a, let's say uh 
monthly mentoring with Alexander, like on these monthly sessions, and you can be familiar what to do or how to act on different situations. So this is important for trading because maybe later in one year you will develop and or we, you will add like your thoughts. But if you just started or uh, you want to improve your trading, it can be a good thing, especially it's like, uh, let's say free of charge. You can just uh, trade on your account and uh, we are not charging like for them. Uh, we just provide these indicators for our clients. So this is uh, from us. Uh, it from Admiral Content Cloud without. Yes, of course, sure. You you, uh, you can get indicators without participating in contest. So just send us a request on uh, elderdisk at admiralmarkets.com. And uh, for those who are watching us on YouTube, uh, email address will be on the video description. And also uh, one thing for those uh, who noticed the mistake on indicators i really appreciate that we already have like let's say some sort of community where we are sharing um, uh, sorry I, I see adela please not uh, post uh, your emails here it's uh, i mean it's open chart uh, so just uh, send us an email, email to elderdisc.com. So uh, I will I will type it here right now one more time. So here it is. Uh, just send us uh, email and we'll reply you with uh, Alexander Elders indicators. And also what I want to show for those, uh, actually for that uh, a mistake which we found with Alexander and with you guys uh, regarding to impulse system, I just want to show, I quickly applied uh, those changes which were asked. And I uh, just want to show quickly uh, that if we go, <clears throat> if you already use indicators and uh, probably something went wrong, uh, so you can go to uh, properties of uh, impulse system and change time ratio from five, it's normally five here, to one. Yeah, and I will also ask our developers to apply these uh, changes for the new one um, uh, for next uh, for next release. Uh, but yeah, if you have already indicators, uh, just uh, update this number, and it should work for it. It, it should work uh, in, in in a way it should. Uh, if not, please also send me an email to elderdisk at admiralmarkets.com, and uh, we will try to investigate and help you with all these things. And it's uh, pretty much it from my side. So uh, thank you for uh, participation. So thank you for your active involvement. And also uh, keep posting your question on our YouTube channel under the latest Alexander's video. Uh, normally, uh, I provide uh, questions before, so just not to uh, waste a lot of time during the webinar because it's uh, we need a lot of time to, to we have a lot of questions to speak about. And if you uh, provide your question for next webinar under that video, which we will upload on our YouTube channel, it will be much more easier for all. So please do this if you have questions. If they are not uh, answered during today's session, tomorrow it will be uh, uploaded on YouTube channel, and you can. Uh, put your question there and during the next webinar it will be answered yeah uh, yeah uh, so uh, thank you from my side uh, thank you for your participation so see you on next uh, webinar on april uh, have a good day have, keep safe so uh, yeah so thank you uh, uh, and the, it's uh, one more thing like asking for an email so i'm posted email right now and i'm closing the sessions so thank you see you on next uh, webinar thank you and bye